Welcome back now for the news in detail. We start from Pakistan, where the Pakistan and Taliban have agreed on the importance of an early resumption of the stalled Afghan peace process. Now, in a statement, Pakistan's foreign ministry said the two sides came to the understanding at a meeting in Islamabad. Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi led Pakistan's delegation in the talks. The Taliban delegation was led by Deputy Chief Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar. Qureshi said Pakistan will continue to play its role as a facilitator of the Afghan peace process. The foreign minister said the Taliban delegation would meet would be visiting U.S. envoy Zalmi Khalil Zad in Islamabad. Qureshi told the Taliban certain spoilers in the region are opposed to the entire peace process. He went on to say that the U.S. and Taliban need to take their dialogue to a logical conclusion and sign a peace deal. Meanwhile, the Taliban say the peace process and other political and trade issues were discussed in the meeting. Now, for more updates on this story, we are joined by Isa Nakvi, our correspondent in Islamabad. Thank you for joining us, Isa. A much anticipated meeting between Pakistan and the Taliban was held. So, what is the outcome of the Taliban and Pakistan meeting? Well, well uh, the official, official handout of the meeting uh, says that the meeting went very well. It was positive, and both Pakistan and Taliban agreed upon the need uh, for an early resumption of dialogue between Taliban and the U.S. So the very exercise uh, which Pakistan wanted to facilitate uh, that uh, this process of talks, the Doha talks that were scuttled between uh, the Taliban and the U.S., uh, that shall resume. And now uh, the fact that uh, U.S. Special Envoy Zalmi Khalil Zad is in uh, Pakistan and the Taliban delegation is also in Pakistan, the first meeting uh, that has officially being confirmed by the Foreign Office of Pakistan was a delegation level meeting between Taliban and the Foreign Minister of Pakistan in which both the side agreed upon the need for resumption of dialogue. Uh, the Taliban delegation, as it is being said, is going to stay uh, for a little while uh, in Islamabad and will be holding other meetings as well. They are expected to call on Prime Minister Imran Khan as well and they are going to hold uh, meetings. But although uh, an official uh, confirmation of their meeting with Zalmi Khalil Zad is awaited, but the sources, they claim uh, that uh, this meeting is going to take place today. And Isa, also tell us uh, what are the policies of a, uh, the continuation of the peace talks between Taliban and the United States? Uh, now, so far, what we have seen uh, coming out of uh, the meeting uh, between Taliban delegation and Foreign Minister and also uh, the uh, press release that has been issued by the spokesperson of Taliban, uh, they have actually agreed upon uh, the continuation and the resumption of the dialogue. And the very fact that Zalmi Khalil Zad came to Islamabad was obviously for this reason that after uh, the process was started last month and it was announced by uh, the President of the United States. Donald Trump and then uh, Pakistan offered uh, that Pakistan could help facilitate uh, this talk process to resume and uh, it was agreed upon that there is no military solution to the Afghan conflict. So uh, what has happened now that uh, there is a positive gesture from the, uh, the US side, from the Taliban side in Pakistan as well. So uh, the Pakistan as a facilitator and uh, Taliban and the US as negotiators, they all uh, seem to be on the same page. Uh, so we can actually uh, uh, listen to an official confirmation of resumptions, resumption of dialogue soon. But as the spokesperson of the Foreign Ministry of Pakistan, Dr. Mohammad Faisal, in his briefing, said today that this is a very delicate matter and uh, it is uh, like a deliberate attempt that uh, media is not being given the technical details of all the meetings that are taking place. Right, Isa, moment. media has not been given the technical details. Thank you very much for your update on the meeting between Taliban and Pakistan. Now moving on, the daughter of ex-Chief Minister Mahbuba Mufti says the people of Indian-occupied Kashmir identify with Pakistan's Prime Minister. In an interview, Ithija Mufti said Imran Khan advocated for Kashmiris in his speech at the UN General Assembly last week. Mufti said Kashmiris respect Khan because he presented the case of Kashmiris living under Indian occupation for over half an hour. She said even pro-Indian politicians are now questioning their decision to back its seizure of half of Kashmir. 
Mufti said today India has been transformed from Gandhi's country into a fortress of extremist Hindutva ideology. She said India's self-declared secular ideology has been exposed by the rapidly shrinking space for all religious and ethnic minorities. Further curbing movement of Kashmiri's Indian forces have decided to deploy 50 surveillance drones in the occupied valley. The government officials say the drones will be used to monitor and prevent curfew violations in Indian occupied Kashmir. A senior police official in the valley said the Union Home Ministry has already approved the procurement of UAVs. It said the drones will be commissioned to the Indian occupying forces in the near future. The occupied valley has been turned into a prison by New Delhi with over 8 million Kashmiris held hostage in their homes. Humanitarian crisis in the valley is worsening with food and medicine shortages, worsening over a two months lockdown. A U.S. Congressional Subcommittee will hold a hearing on human rights in South Asia with a focus on occupied Kashmir. Congressman Brad Sherman, the chairman of the House Subcommittee on Asia, will share the hearing on October 22nd. In a statement, the committee said the hearing will focus on arrests of politicians and lockdown in Indian-occupied Kashmir. It will also review the humanitarian situation in Kashmir and probe whether Kashmiris have adequate supplies of basic necessities. Congressman Sherman said American Kashmiri fear for the safety of their loved ones in the occupied valley. New Delhi's crushing curfew and communications blackout in occupied Kashmir has now entered its 60th consecutive day. Meanwhile, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan will visit China on a two-day trip on October 7th. Among other issues, Khan will discuss progress on the China-Pakistan economic corridor. In a cabinet meeting, Khan reiterated that timely completion of CPEC projects is the government's top priority. The Prime Minister said he will visit China and meet its leadership to further strengthen bilateral friendship. Earlier, Khan telephoned his Bangladeshi counterpart, Sheikh Hasina, to inquire about her health and convey his best wishes. Indian Prime Minister Modi's claim of declaring the country free of open defecation has recently come under fire. Experts expect scepticism about the claim, saying millions still lack access to toilets and that because of inefficiency, new facilities are not being used. More details in this report. India is open defecation free has been questioned by experts who cite data from rural as well as urban areas. Experts from the Research Institute for Compassionate Economics doubt the shortfall has been made up in recent months. Many of the toilets that have been constructed are often locked, used for storage or some other purpose. We felt very good that a toilet was being built. There are toilets being built, sure, but they are all shut. None of them are functional. According to experts at Rice, in December 2018, about half of people in the states of Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan still defecated in the open. These four states are home to more than 450 million people. But old practices constrain mobility, especially for women. We do feel ashamed when we go to the jungle, but we are helpless in such a situation. We can't stop ourselves. There are males looking at us. Yes, we do feel ashamed. Now, it's a public area. Everyone and anyone who takes that route will look. We are not the only people who use the jungle. But if we try to save our dignity, then where will we go? Despite development and India's rapid modernity, this remains a monstrous task. Cultural barriers, ingrained habits, or a lack of knowledge about sanitation also create barriers to more widespread usage. Moving on, Iran has confirmed it will further reduce JCPOA commitments and boost scientific and strategic nuclear activities. In a statement, Iran's Atomic Energy Organization said the step is in accordance with the 2015 nuclear pact. The organization said it will continue extensive scientific and strategic activities until the desired result is achieved. It said the reduction of commitments is a legal issue and not a violation of the nuclear deal. The body also said Tehran has repeatedly said if other parties abide by their commitments, Iran will also return to the pact.
It's time for a short break. Stay tuned with Indus News. Welcome back now. Moving on with the news stories. In Iraq, the number of people killed in violent protests against the government has risen to 13. Medics say over 100 protesters have been injured in clashes with police in Baghdad. The government has declared a curfew in the southern province of Daikar. Thousands took to the streets against rising unemployment and corruption in Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi's government. The protesters descended on Baghdad, demanding reform to address bad governance. Large demonstrations were also held in Samava and oil-rich city of Basra. Meanwhile, Iran says two border crossings with Iraq have been closed because of the unrest. Moving on, the United States will impose tariffs on $7.5 billion worth of imports from the European Union. Treasury Department says it will impose the tariffs on European Union from 18th of October. Washington released a list of goods to be hit by the new tariffs after a landmark WTO decision over EU's illegal Airbus subsidies. It includes 10% levies on jetliners and 25% duties on other products including beverages and agri-products. Earlier, the United States won a 15-year legal battle at the WTO against the European Union over billions of dollars of illegal subsidies given to Airbus. U.S. President Donald Trump has accused the House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff of treason. In a tweet, Trump said Schiff is inverting the words of the U.S. President during the impeachment inquiry. He said Democrats should focus on building the country instead of wasting time on impeachment. Trump said they have been trying to impeach him since his election. Meanwhile, Adam Schiff said the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is trying to interfere with witnesses in the inquiry. Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar has rejected the latest Brexit proposal submitted by the United Kingdom government. Varadkar said the plans do not meet agreed backstop objectives. Earlier, Prime Minister Johnson submitted a new proposal to the EU to replace the backstop in withdrawal agreement. In a telephone conversation with his UK counterpart, Varadkar said he will discuss the proposals with the European Union. The Irish Premier said he wants to see a deal agreed and ratified. He said he will continue working closely with the Irish Republic's EU partners. Besides speaking to EU heads of government, Varadkar also met the Swedish and Danish premiers. Moving on to Hong Kong, where police have asked the government to impose a curfew following a night of chaos and violence in the city. Thousands of protesters have taken to the streets of Hong Kong to denounce the police shooting a teenager. Demonstrators uprooted street tarmacs, threw petrol bombs at the police, set businesses and metro stations ablaze. Junior Police Officers Association chairman said curfew will maintain public order. Protesters are also furious as they said Beijing is interfering in their city's affairs despite a promise of autonomy in 1997. China dismisses accusations and has accused foreign governments for the fiasco in the city. Meanwhile, six soldiers have been killed in twin roadside explosion outside Somalia's capital, Mogadishu. Several other were also wounded in the attacks. Police said the blast targeted a military convoy. The convoy was hit near El Lasha Behaya, 15 kilometers southwest of Mogadishu. Police officials said the attacks were double landmine blast. No group has claimed responsibility yet. Moving on, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says a ceasefire in Libya is a priority for Washington. He hopes that Berlin Conference on Libya will help resume political process in the country. In a press conference with his Italian counterpart, Luigi Di Maio, in Rome, Pompeo reiterated the need to resume a dialogue in the conflicted region. Italy's Foreign Minister Di Maio said Rome shares unanimity with Washington for a political solution to Libya's crisis. 
Earlier, Security Council member states have also called for non-military solution to the crisis and complete ceasefire. Meanwhile, clashes erupted between citizens and Khalifa Haftar allied forces in Davoon area. Several people, including two women, were injured in the assault by the militia men. Germany has called on Libya to close its immigrant detention center, saying they are unsafe. German envoy Oliver Oskar said the July airstrike on Tajura center in sufficient evidence to shut the camps. Oskar said such facilities are a vulnerable target with a potential heavy death toll. In the meantime, an EU delegation is pressing Libyan authorities to protect illegal immigrants who are detained. The delegation said the release of migrants from these centers should be the first step towards improving their lives. Migrant shelters in Libya are crowded with thousands of people who have been rescued at sea or arrested by Libyan security forces. Now in the business stories, the United States has won World Trade Organization's approval to impose tariffs on $7.5 billion worth of European goods. The decision over illegal Airbus subsidies threatens to trigger a trade war as the global economy falters. The WTO found European plane maker Airbus and its US rival Boeing received billions of dollars in illegal subsidies. The European Union is expected to win approval next year for its own tariffs over illegal aid to Boeing. Now, the US and European aerospace industries have been engaged in a 15-year battle over subsidies. Samsung Electronics has ended mobile telephone production in China because of intensifying competition from domestic rivals. The South Korean tech giant says it took the difficult decision in a bid to boost efficiency. However, it will continue sales in China. The shutdown of Samsung's latest last Chinese phone factory allows a cut in production at the plant in Hezhou City. Other manufacturers are also considering moving production from China because of rising labor costs. Sony is also likely to close its Beijing smartphone plant, but Apple still makes major products in China. Now, Asian stocks have slumped anticipating a new trade war between the United States and the European Union. Markets dipped to a one-month low after Washington announced over 7.5 billion in tariffs on EU goods. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index has slipped to half a percent. Hong Kong retail sales in August plunged to its lowest on record. Japan's Nikkei 225 plunged over 2% over fall in shares of fast retailing, software group and Fanuc. Australia's ASX 200 has also lost over 2% as most sectors saw declines. Now let's have a look at the weather update. With the weather update, we come to the end of this bulletin. For more news and updates, keep watching Indus News.